and it can be applied in any key. Uh, let's look at maybe everyone plays in the key of G. That's like worship music 101, right? So let's look at the key of G, shall we? So we've got so we've got a uh, a G chord. And as we're playing this G chord, we look so let's look on the graph with our chord and with the chord, all the ones you know highlighting this gray kind of bold underline. You start on the far left and go down. You see do you see the G underlined? When you see that G, let's say the song plays it. Let's say the song is in the key of A. Hey, we're gonna play key of A. But I want to play my G chords. I like my G chords, you know? And I don't want to get off my G chords, you know? Everybody can make a living off four chords and a capo. I can do it too. And it honestly changes the sound and stuff. So uh, maybe you can't learn the song fast enough. Maybe you just like the way the G chord sounds in the key of A. So looking at that chart on the far left, underlined in black, you see chord, you follow it down to the G. To the G. And now you see zero with no capo obviously you start on the top and then you work your way down and you see that's a G first fret you see G second fret oh yeah first first frets G sharp right so zero no capo is G first fret is G sharp second fret is the key of A this sound in your ear so I'm gonna go to the second fret and play a G chord that's now an A chord keep this sound in your ear tight enough right okay love it love it love it love it love it so as I'm looking with with that that's in the key of A so let's do something let's do something else um, let's go y'all are gonna walk through this one we're gonna do the key of D. I want to play I want to play a D chord. Okay? Now, as I'm playing that, I want you to read this chart on how to play it. How do you play it in the key of E? What fret is it going to be on? Look at the chart. Find that gray highlighted bold D chord. Work your way up from left to right, reading the top of it. Zero fret, what chord is it? First fret, what is it? If I want a second fret, what is it? Third fret, fourth fret, what is it? Play it in the key of E. Did you say second fret? Awesome. Look at you. I already learned how to use the capo. Isn't that amazing? Ah. Very nice. If I want to make it in the key, here's a hard one. We're going to go for a curveball. If I want to use my D chord and I want to put it in the key of G, what capo, what fret does it go on? D chord in the same key. You play it in the key of G. Did you say fifth fret? <laughs> yeah, there's that 
broke my one rule and went too far out. There it is. Right. Q of G. <laughs> okay, and that's how you're going to use a capo. Uh, if you're new at this, this can't be super, it's, it's, not, it's not easy if it's something you're being exposed to for the first time. If you're getting on the fly, great. If you're not, you are in great company, okay? It typically doesn't happen and come natural. Keep this chart on you when you go on your plane for church or uh, somewhere like that, and you and your praise team, or wherever you might be, and take that chart with you. It's absolutely helpful. You know, it's like ah, I know these four chords, or I know these ten chords, and you get a key that you got some bar chords, and you're just like, how does that even work? Well, you got this capo chart. Use it, learn it, and you get to a point where you don't even think about it anymore. You just know right where to go without this chart. And uh, I didn't think I'd ever get there, but I did. My professor was right. You know, I just kept going and going and going, and you finally get a shot, and you, you get it. You're going to nail it. I know you are. You already nail it, like, several times. And if you haven't, keep practicing. Drill yourself like that. You know, if it's on this fret, I got this chord. What fret would that be in this key? You know, and just keep working with it. And remember, a great way to check yourself is if you go, like I did, and play it in that, on that fret, take it off, and then play the key you're trying to play in. If it doesn't match, you know you're in the wrong key. Something's wrong. Check yourself. So it's a great way to check your work. Um, the next thing we're going to be, it's a great way to get around bar chords. And playing a capo doesn't make you a weaker player. Uh, I know a lot of people say, oh, people who just have capos are just for those that don't want to play bar chord. And that's why, well, that might be the case for some people. That's not the reason why you use a capo. Capo, I, guys, I can play any chord on the neck. I can play the bar chords. I can do everything. And uh, there's still many more I got to learn and got to do, but the bar chords don't bother me. And uh, there's at times I'm going to use a capo just because I think it's better for the song. Um, that's part of being a good player. You know, it's not just being able to play anything and everything, but knowing when to and when not to do something. Uh, just because you can play a bar chord doesn't mean you should play a bar chord. Think about it. How does it help the song the best? <laughs> 